Hi guys, welcome back. Um, this time we're going to learn how we can link two or more Docker containers together. Uh, the idea of linking Docker containers is quite useful when we have applications um, that require to run maybe on different servers, like for example, if we run MySQL database server and we run a Apache web server or something like that and we want them to communicate together, maybe we can use PHP uh, to retrieve or save data uh, from or to the database server, then we can have MySQL database server and Apache web server running on two different containers and then we can link the containers together and make the interactions happen. Um, so Docker is quite useful when it comes to these things and uh, in this video though we're not going to, going to be using MySQL and Apache, we're going to be using a simple server called Redis server. Redis um, just in case you don't know about it, it's an in-memory data structure store, so, a data, so it's actually a database, but it's saved in memory, which means it's really quick, and it supports several data structures like lists, sets, and so on and so forth. It's very simple to use, as you will see in the uh, you know in in, in in a few moments. Right. So what I've done here is I've used Docker pull command. I don't think I've mentioned this command before, but as the name suggests, it's used to download Docker images. Uh, from Docker registry or from Docker Hub, so it's only used for downloading images. When you want to run a container of an image, you have to use Docker Run. I've done this in the background, Docker Pull, uh, to download the Redis image. If I do Docker image or do Docker images, you can see that I have it there, and um, we're going to run a simple. Or, or sorry, we're going to run an instance of the Redis image, so container docker run, let's minus D run it in the background, minus minus name, let's give it a name, maybe Redis server, and then say Redis. So this is going to be running, this is going to be running in the background, and that's the container ID. If I do docker ps, then you can see that uh, it's running on port number 6379. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run another container of the Redis image. I'm going to call it Redis client. Um, and I'm going to communicate with this container to save data into the database. So let's have a look how that had how, how, how that is done. Docker run. This time we're going to be running it interactively. So minus IT. And let's give it a name, maybe Docker client. I'm sorry, Redis client. Redis client one Redis and let's have a shell. But now what we're going to do is we're going to use minus minus link and we're going to provide the uh, first uh, container's name, so Redis server, and then give it an alias. So let's so call it, for example, Redis or something like that. These two names after the minus minus link separated by the, uh, the the colon, the first one is the name of the container that I am running, that I've already run, this one here, the server, and the radius, this one after the colon, is an alias inside the new container to point to that container. You will see that in action, and hopefully it'll make sense. I'm sorry, oh no, I said my minus minus D should be minus IT, and we should be good to go now. We're inside the Redis client container. Uh, we named it Redis client one, and we've linked it to the server container. To make sure it's actually linked, uh, what we can do is, for example, we can display the contents of the Etsy hosts file, and you can see here that that container is actually reachable from our current container. In, in fact, we, we can even see its IP address and we can communicate to it by using the alias name. So if I do, for example, ping redis to ping that container, I should be able to do that, and the ping command is running nicely. Let's clear the screen to get more space. Now what we're going to do is, the reason, I, by the way, I ran another, uh, uh, another redis container is because it has the redis client. So what I can, what I can do is, I can say redis, client and then minus h minus ho the host name to connect to the redis server if you're not sure you can go back with those commands 
and if you remember we linked it we linked our current container with the previous server container and we gave it we gave it an alias of redis so we can connect using the redis client to that container and as you can see we're inside it now if i do ping it should give me pong for those who are familiar with redis so uh, let's try and save some data into this container so set for example my name to Noradin. this is by the way key value pairs maybe set also my country to Libya or something like that just an example of key value pair so the key is my country the value is Libya key is my name the value is Noradin. it says okay so it has saved it if I do get my name I should be able to retrieve my name if I do get my country I should be able to retrieve my country now this is quite interesting as you can see but what's more interesting is if I run another container another client container and connect to the server container I should be able to retrieve the data uh, if I go back to the top I just wanted to copy this command so it's quicker and then let's give it a different name because redis client 1 already has been taken if i do redis client 2 and run it i've run now another container called redis client 2 and i've linked it to the server container um, this is the server container name and this is the alias inside the new container now and what i can do is again i can do redis client minus h and the alias is redis this is a completely new container now I should be able to connect and if I try to retrieve my name I should be able to have it if I try to retrieve my country I should also be able to retrieve it why it's because we've we, we've managed to successfully link our current container in fact two current client containers to the server container if I do docker ps I should be able to see the three containers running I hope the idea makes sense. Um, it's quite uh, easy to, to actually link token containers, but I am sure you can see the power behind it. Um, another uh, thing that I wanted to add is if I if we display, for example, um, inside the client container, if we display the environment variables, in fact, if I do set, oh, I'm sorry, not here, here inside the, inside the client container, let me exit the uh, client, the Redis client, if I inside, inside the cloud container I do set to have a look at the environment variables, I should be able to see details about Redis as you can see. And here we can have uh, information about the IP address and so on and so forth. So I hope the idea makes sense. We've been able to successfully link more than uh, two containers together. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.